Hi and welcome to Watch The Time and my unboxing and initial review of my new Casio G-Shock. Now, if you've seen the sneak peek, you'll know what this is. Casio G-Shock GA2000-189ER. As you can see, this is an EU model and it's got the 5590 movement in it. Now, I didn't realise this until I actually come to do this review, but this is my first ever Anna Digi Casio. Not that that means anything particular, I've just never had one before. And the other thing I just want to cover off, because I know it's a bit of a hot topic at the moment, I paid for this watch with my own money. So let's get it open. Typical Casio fare. You get a little thin instruction manual for the module, 5590. All the warranty details, etc. in there. A little hand tag which I've taken off. So that obviously shows you the details and then a little brief of what you're getting. So this is one of the new G-Shocks with carbon core guard. Shock resistance, 200 meters of water resistance, double LED light, one to one hundredth second. Stopwatch, world time, daily alarm and timer. Usual fare that you get in most G-Shocks. Now I will state this right up front. There's one glaring omission with this watch, which I don't know if it ruins it for me or not. Um, time will tell, um, but I'll speak about that later. So just your normal Casio G-Shock tin. These are nice tins. I just put them in a drawer upstairs, um, but they are nice to sort of ship the box in. And if you ever sell the watch, they're nice to keep because it's a good way of shipping the watch without getting damaged. Now, one of the things I like about this is it's a it's a new kind of fresh, modern design. So if you're used to square G-Shocks, I think this is a, a more modern, sort of fresh look, a fresh approach to it. And it, it's just something different. And I really like the design of it. So essentially we've got an Anadigi, we've got two little LCD screens. There's this sort of mode wheel over here, which is kind of funky. We'll, we'll start with that because that's the fun part. So when you press the mode button, instead of just scrolling through like a normal G-Shock does, it actually goes to so world time, stopwatch, and then it goes to stopwatch, timer, you've got countdown timer, alarms, you've got your usual um, sort of five alarms, signal alarm, etc., and then back to normal. Now, this is a world timer, so we've got uh, split time zones. Now I've got this set to London Daylight Saving Time, you can see there, and UTC. So if I press and hold the reset button, it says UCC swap. Once it's bleeped, it will now change the time. There you go, so it winds it back an hour, and now I'm on a, a different time zone. So it's a nice easy swap. But if I want to see the other time zone, I can just press once and it says London there, 7.23. And obviously I'm on 6.23. And you can see your world time wheel there. Just one press shows it's on world time. And then after a few seconds, it goes back to your date screen. Now, on here you've got the day. You can have the date, so um, 14th of May. And the time or the day. Down the bottom we've got running seconds and indicators for alarm signal and mute. That all works really well. Press and hold again, it will swap. London, so now it's gonna go back to London time. So it's gonna move it forward an hour. So that's quite funky. If you're doing something, say for instance, you're setting the alarm and the hands cover the screen here, as you're setting the alarm, they just move out the way on their own. And um, even if there's something covering this screen here, uh, the hands just move out of the way on their own. So that's a really nice feature. And then once you've set the, the alarm or whatever, they'll move back. There's also a hand setting function so you can make sure that the hands are all lining up right and this little dial lines up correctly over here. Um, there's no loom on this watch, but the two little displays are uh, lit up, backlit, and there's an LED just in there which lights up the whole screen. And this is where I'm going to talk about the main issue I have with this watch, and that is that it's not solar. I'm not worried about the fact that it's not an atomic watch, but I think it should have been solar because the light only stays on for about a second, second and a half, but it's, it's light enough to light the room you're in. 
you can actually see by it you can it's a really useful little torch but it doesn't stay on long enough and the reason it doesn't stay on long enough i suspect is because it obviously would reduce the life of the battery if it was a solar it wouldn't matter now my solar atomic g-shock square I have the, the light set for three seconds, the maximum, because I, I don't worry about it. My battery's never gonna run flat because it's a solar watch, so it's not an issue. Now, I don't know what the, the life of the battery is in this. Usually with a, a G-Shock, a slightly more complicated one, you're probably getting three to four years, maybe seven, I don't know. And I suspect this has got multiple batteries in it. It'll have, I should think it'll have one just for the light and one for the movement. So it may not be an issue and it may run for five years. I just would have liked to have the option to have the light stay on a bit longer. So that's my, my kind of gripe with this is that I wish it was a solar watch. There's plenty of real estate on the, you know, they could have had the solar panel up here. You know, Casio are really good at integrating solar panels. Um, so that is a bit of a shame. So one of the features of this is this new carbon core. And I can't obviously show you that because it's all inside, but basically you've got like a case around and then obviously there's a back case as well. So it's kind of sandwiched within all this casing. Um, so, you know, it's a G-Shock, you know it's going to be really robust and uh, reliable and really take a, a beating. You know, it's going to withstand shock, water, heat, cold. Uh, absolutely everything so it will take a real good beat in this now obviously you can see there one of my favorite features these buttons are absolutely fantastic I absolutely love them they're just the right amount of pressure so they're not easy to push but they're not difficult to push but they're lovely and big they've got this knurled lovely sort of edge pattern on them really nice really lovely action just absolutely love these and and they look funky as well I think they look really funky you can get it in different colours, this watch. I've gone for this. I just think it looks funky in the yellow. They did have a nice blue as well, but um, I went for the yellow because this is a nice watch that I'd... This was is the watch I've been looking for for a while, really, that is, um, will be the watch I wear when I go kayaking and stuff. So I'm really pleased with that. I like the fact that you've got the G-Shock matching and these little dots here matching this yellow colour. Um, and then you've got this kind of gold aluminium effect around this little dial there. I just think the whole thing is really quite nice. One of the, the other new features on the back here, which is um, kind of never seen before on G-Shocks, is they've got quick release uh, spring bars for the straps. Um, and you can, you know, that just looks like, let's measure the lug width. So measuring the lug width there, looks like we've got, let's get that right in. Looks like 24 mil lug width. So I guess you could put any strap you like on there, but I guess Casio are going to bring out different straps to fit that, and there'll be aftermarket stuff as well available. But I just think that's a nice feature. I mean, personally, I wouldn't change the band because it's um, typical Casio. It's comfortable. It's plenty long enough. They've done away with all the like the dive the dive spits there that dig into your hands. And look at the way that case, you know this is, it's a big watch obviously, but look at how that's going to conform to the wrist. It's so comfortable. It's really lightweight as well. It weighs, you know, like all Casios, virtually nothing. So yes, it's a big watch and it's going to have good wrist presence. I'll do a wrist shot in a minute. And you know, you know you're wearing it kind of thing because it's such a big watch, but there's no weight to it and they're super comfortable. So I love that. So I'll just pop it on the wrist now and I'll just show you. So just for some comparison, here's my stealthy um, Bluetooth Atomic Solar negative display G-Shock um, with a new addition of some ball bars on it. Um, I just love this, this watch. Okay, and there it is on my just over seven inch wrist. So you can see, yes, it's a big watch. It's got massive wrist presence, but it just conforms so nicely to the wrist. It's just so comfortable. And because of that shape, it sits in that same position. It doesn't sort of move around. Sometimes you get a watch and they kind of hook over there and they just move around a little bit. This one just sits so nicely and comfortably on the wrist. Uh, it's absolutely lovely. So don't worry about it being a big watch. It's meant to be a big watch. It, as long as it wears comfortably on your wrist, you know, don't worry about it. And look at those buttons, they're just so easy to get to. You know, they've got that big button for the light as well. Just a fantastic. Negatives or niggles with this watch is gonna be the, 
the, the two displays are quite small. So uh, that, that display there, especially when you're using the stopwatch and the timer and different things, let's just go to, right, so we're on the, st the stopwatch now on that screen and let's just start. So we've got starting the stopwatch going. So you can see there, you've got the, the running seconds at the bottom or tenths of a second at the bottom and the seconds in that little main screen. There you go, you can see it better there. It's easier to see in real life than it is on camera, but I, I know people will have a problem with that. It is tiny, but it's okay. Could it have been bigger? Yes, I would have liked it a little bit bigger. So not a perfect watch, but I can forgive it those because it just looks cool. It's really comfortable. And for my first Anna Digi, I'm really enjoying it. So there you go, that's my initial impressions and unboxing of the Casio G-Shock GA2000 Carbon Core. Carbon Core. I'm not really sure what that does, but um, or whether it does anything different to uh, a, a you know a normal G-Shock. But all I will say is for a big watch, this is really light. So I don't know if it affects that or not, but um, I absolutely love this watch. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up um, from Amazon. It, not a cheap watch, but not a particularly expensive watch. You should be able to get them between I think sort of a hundred, hundred and twenty pounds depending on uh, where you look and you know what the prices are doing at the time but I'll leave a I'll, I'll find some on Amazon leave a link in the description for you um, so for now this is watch the time I appreciate your subscriptions your likes your comments and uh, I'll see you in the next one cheers bye